So, you know, we in a new year, new me season. Yes. But a lot of us still have some of the same goals from 2023. And a lot of y'all, and I know for sure because y'all came up to me and asked. You did. A lot of y'all wanted to start a podcast. Yes. I got good news for you, player. Spotify for podcasts is here for every need you have. We've been using Spotify for podcasters since we started our podcast. It's so easy. You literally record, edit, and upload all from your phone, your computer. So no matter what your setup looks like, you can start now. Yes, get your conversations, your opinion, your views out to the world. People need to hear you. You can distribute your podcast to Spotify and anywhere else that podcasts are heard. With Spotify for podcasters, you can earn money in a multitude of ways. Ads or podcast subscriptions. I mean, it's an easy way to get your visions out to the world and earn some extra pocket change. Yeah, my favorite thing about all of this is free 99. Yes. <laughs> you know, they don't charge you a dime. So you really got nothing holding you back. Today, today, not tomorrow, today, let's be heard. Spotify for podcasters. Let's be seen. Welcome and welcome back to another episode of the For the Healthy Health Podcast. Where we talk about conscious living, self-awareness, and everything in between. I'm your host, Dre. Sunset Tim. Thank you for joining us and allowing us to be a part of your journey. Smooth. How you feeling today? I am a bit... <laughs> that face! I'm a bit under the weather. Okay? So yes, you are. Everyone bear with me. Um, but other than that, other than feeling tired and ready for a nap i feel grateful excited to sit here and talk with you today talk to our community how are you i am i am well i got a little pep in my step i'm feeling good this morning um hip still hurt yeah he, I'm, too, I'm too young to have hip problems it's but a I gym injury injury it is went too hard he never work on glutes y'all i keep like babe work on glutes work your glutes work i do your run glutes. now don't i do run you run. I will run, but I never like do like weight training like far as I don't do leg day. I will run though, but I won't do leg day. And I had recently and I think I just started out too fast, too quick, too hard, too quick or something, but the the hip is on it, I'm too young to have hip problems. This shit is ridiculous. Agreed. Flat out ridiculous. So other than that, I am well. I said I got a pep in my step, I feel good. Um You look good. Thank you, thank you, you too. I'm looking forward to everything that I am and everything I am becoming. Mm. You feel me? Snaps fingers. Okay. Like they do at like poetry readings. I don't know if they actually do that. I've never, I think they do. I've never been to one. I think they do. On TV they do, so they do. It's real. Maybe so. <laughs> the media says it is true. If it's on the internet, <laughs> it is true. If it's on the internet. It is true. Kidding. So how y'all feeling from the cubes? How's everybody doing? Give y'all time to, because we ask for us, but we ask for y'all, really, because, so that's your cue. When we ask, how's everybody doing? That's your cue to check in with yourself and be like, how am I doing? Yes, take a little deep breath. Yeah. Right there from the cubes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't worry about how you look in front of everybody else. Karen is not our concern G- concern right now we just want to make sure we're okay ground ourselves in the moment yes at the gym i know a lot of people be at the gym too so if you're at the gym yeah. at home take a minute what you say i say baby hold your breath this man so breath. if you haven't heard the meditation episode <laughs> i'll be like hold your breath for four seconds and he swear i mean it's like <laughs> 20 seconds i've never had i guess i had never actually sat there just held my breath for four slow counts and exhale for four. I two. really appreciate it, air. Right <laughs> what you saying? Four. When you're done? And when you're done, you're going to appreciate air. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, the imitations be crazy. Like, this man is hilarious. No, you are hilarious. No, you. <laughs> you're hilarious. You're the funny one. Okay. Move ball. Let's get back. Let's get back to work. We are professionals. We are professionals. What are we rapping about today? Today, we're talking about self-mastery, the mastery of self-mastering the being that is us, yes. that is you. Yes, that's beautiful. So when you say self-mastery, what does that mean to you? I think often when we talk about mastering anything, it's a skill. 
it's something outside of ourselves. So when I say master yourself, in simple terms, I mean know yourself. That's kind of vague. And I know that was like trendy. Like I feel like it was used so loosely. Because I think Drake came out with that song, Know Know Yourself. No? Something like that. Yeah, but I feel like it was used very loosely. And that in itself is like knowing yourself is very vague. But I mean, even on a deeper level, for me it's about understanding the being that is you on every level possible. And I know y'all have heard, maybe, maybe not, I've mentioned domestication. So when we enter this world, we are our truest selves. Mm -hmm. We are who we authentically are. But then through domestication, whether it be from society, from parents, whoever you're around, we lose who we truly are. And so then we have values and beliefs that aren't truly ours. And so when I say mastering yourself, I mean getting back to the truest version of yourself, who you really are, unlearning those behaviors, understanding why this certain thing triggers you, learning how to get through said thing. Yeah. That's Something a very like that. good answer. Thank you. But what does it mean to you, though? When I hear self-mastery, I think of the art of knowing self. Mm-hmm. Right? Judgment-free, too, as well. Yeah. The art of noticing everything in me, all my feelings, thoughts, noticing how I react to things, noticing when I don't react to certain things. Yeah. Doing all of this simultaneously and living is like the art of self-mastery, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding why this triggers you a certain way. Certain things are more triggering for us than other people Mm -hmm. and understanding why. Yeah. Unmasking the many versions of us, ones that are protective and then other ones that are kind of, how do I put this, almost costume, like, we wear them on special occasions. We bring them out for certain people, certain events, or certain things we need in our lives. Really, yeah. really digging deep, but not really that deep. Really just noticing yourself for who you truly are. That's the ups and the downs. Every beautiful part of you and every not so handsome part of you. <laughs> handsome part. Yeah, yeah. I got to say handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I think... The book, The Mastery of Self by Don Miguel Ruiz, the way he explains it is really beautiful. And you have a segment for us real quick. I do. So in the book, The Mastery of Self, he says that you become a master of self when you engage the dream of the planet and everyone in it without losing sight of your authentic self and while maintaining the awareness that every choice you make is your own. And so when he talks about, because he, he used a few words in this definition of mastering yourself that if you haven't read this book, you won't be familiar with these words. You ha- won't have any idea what I'm talking about. So when he says the dream of the planet, he's not talking about like your dream, like, you know. You want to be a rapper. Yeah. Or- this simply means the combination of every single being in the world's personal dream. So our collective perspective, what we have decided as a society that is the norm, what's acceptable. Like, think of that as the dream of the planet. Your personal dream is the unique reality created by every individual. So think your personal perspective, your unique perspective, what you value, what you believe is acceptable and not acceptable, and just really essentially how you see the world. Yeah, when you broke that down first, it it really just, it's funny how a simple sentence like that can change everything. It changed what I thought a dream was. Yeah. Really fast. I used to think a dream was, like you said, becoming a rapper, becoming an athlete, whatever it is mm-hmm. you want to do, right? Every little thing is a dream because it has not yet happened. It's you foregoing, foreseeing the future. Mm-hmm. So that makes it a dream. Even a trip to Target is it's a, a dream. dream. It's not guaranteed that they're going to have it in stock. Yeah. You know what I mean? Unless it's, you check the app. The app lied to you. <laughs> it will. I've been I've been on aisle B12 and that shit not been there. I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? 
whole nother that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> but yes, every little thought that you have that has not come true yet is a dream. Agreed. Every little bitty one. So your entire life, for the most part, when you think about it, is especially a walking, living dream. Yeah, and I love Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. Actually, I think is the author of this book, The Sun. He refers to like reality as a dream. And I love that. Like when I first heard it, I was like, wait, what? But like it makes total sense. And I love that. Yeah, because everything is just a vision. Guys having these crazy visions when, you know, Steve Jobs wanted a buttonless phone. Like mm-hmm. the idea for it happened when we had Nokia was like one of the top brands. Yeah. So I mean Or blue remember Blueberry? Blueberry? Blackberry. Blackberry. Oh my God. I sound <laughs> like an old Blueberry woman. Phone, yeah. <laughs> I sound like an old woman. Yes, the Blackberry, Blackberry. was the shit. I love Blackberry. I had Blackberry before I switched over to iPhone. Amazing. Uh, All the little buttons. It, oh, my God. A bl- Blackberry, it really gave, like, a business feel. Did, like, I'm on my day, shit really feel. Did. Yeah. Because there, was, there were two phones <laughs> that were really, like, eating up. It was, like, the Razor and then you had a Blackberry. The Motorola Razor. Yeah. Yes. It was really eating at them times. So the Blackberry was more like, like I'm on my shit. The, yeah. The Razor was more like, you know, I'm just out here thugging. I had the mo- I had I had a pink razor. I had both at one point. In and time. then I had a BlackBerry. Was the last one I had before I permanently transitioned to Apple. Yeah, you did. You was doing it early. I remember. I, being, I remember. I'm, I'm. We're old enough to remember. I remember the first commercial for the iPhone. I don't. I do. I remember seeing him. Was like that shit is crazy. Really? To think now the iPhone one. If somebody gave me that, it'd probably be so outdated to me. But I remember yeah. seeing the first Apple commercial and a little Apple symbol. I, have, I, I, remember I can't remember. Apple is iconic for their commercials. They're like, and it's a whole other story, but I'm going to say this little piece. When it comes to branding, like, their commercials don't have anything to do with their actual product. I most, love that. Most of the time. They have the I'm best. I'm freaked out by the new finger thingy, though. That's not Apple, though. That's the guy who used to no, work with Apple. No, no, that's Apple, too. Apple on their on the watch. They got a little thing you can do now, too. Oh. Yeah, like you could like on the watch and the oh, yeah, the little, yeah, it's you, you, it's, like it's you pinch, giving you Black pinch. Mirror. It's, it's Black Mirror in real life. Is anybody else concerned with the way that the world is starting to be shaped? The power of technology. Yeah, I'm actually very concerned with it. I'm actually trying to go back analog with yeah. everything. I'd like to I like to head backwards for my personal being. Now, everybody else, if you into it. That's cool, but I think I'm headed backwards. I, think I really want the the light phone. I think that's what it's yeah, called. Yeah, the light phone, dumb phone, dummy phone. I don't think it's called that. I think it's called the light phone. I've seen some people refer to it as like the dummy phone. Oh, but I really want... And it's just like, I think... I'm not afraid of progression. Don't ever get it twisted. But I think we have to draw the line when the progression of technology is interfering with our connection as human beings. Yeah, and I just feel like technology, the the advancement is so driven towards entertainment. Yeah, There's so many other things that I feel like technology could focus on to make things a better world. Agreed. Like 75 degrees in November. Insane. Wow. But back to... Back to today's. Back to today's. Back, what you say? Your teacher used to say, back from the barn. Back from the barn. My teacher used to always say... <laughs> It would be hilarious. Back from the barn. But, um, yeah, and so in that definition, he also used the word authentic self. Authentic self is the divine inside of you, the force that gives life to your mind and your body. That's it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad. I'm sorry. I didn't, oh, I didn't my know. God. You looking know. at me like. I didn't know if there was more coming, and I had to give you space. And not to be throwing all these like definitions at y'all, I just want y'all to really understand some of the terms that we say, some of the things that we uh, will be talking about in this episode. So I mentioned domestication earlier, and you probably have heard me mention that on other episodes very briefly, maybe not with, maybe without going in depth with the subject. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, y'all, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I am. I'm a little under the weather, so bear with me. Domestication is the system of control in the dream of the planet. In the book, he gives an example of this little boy when he's eating his dinner. He goes, I'm full, Grandma. And his grandma says, eat your eat your food, finish your food. And he's like, but I'm full, though. Like, I, I don't want to eat anymore. And Grandma is like, but you really need to eat your food so you can be a big, strong boy. With domestication... A large part of it is like control, mm-hmm. right? So she used 
you know, being a big, strong boy to control him. And so he eats all of his food to satisfy his grandma. And if you look 10, 20 years in the future, he's a grown man now, and he eats all of his food to be a big, strong boy. And he becomes overweight and just, you know, all the things that come along with overeating. Overconsumption. Overconsumption just because his grandmother told him, hey, you should do this so you can become a big, strong boy. And, like, that's uh, an example of domestication. And the book says that learning how to spot and release our domestication, reclaiming who we are in the process, is a hallmark of a master of self. Yeah, I like that. That is good. When you talk about domestication, the first thing that comes to mind for me is, like, dogs. Yeah. Like, we need to get back to letting the dogs be the dogs. Yeah. Drake, Drake got an album called For the Dogs. Like, Who does? Drake do. I think he got an album called For the Dogs or something like that. Oh, okay. Anyway, just made me think of it. Well, yeah, we need to get back to letting the dogs be the dogs. We domesticate a dog. We try to get him to be quiet at certain times. We try to get him to live in this little bitty box cage thing right here. It's to the point that, you know, I, I don't even know if most people know how a dog would live in the wild. Like, what would they do for shelter? What would they yeah. do for these things? They've been domesticated so far down. It's almost like they need us to survive. Right. And they don't actually need us to survive. They actually don't. Not at all. And I think with domestication too, all domestication isn't bad, right? Like it, you can yeah, use, there's is there is some organization that comes exactly along with when you when you're raising a child or anything like that. And and don't get me wrong, when I going back to that to that example, homeboy's grandma, she probably had good intentions. Like you know and what I'm saying? She wants him to be full. Yeah, she wants him to be yeah, fulfilled. Say, yeah, fulfilled, but. A lot of times, again, overage, like overeating Mm -hmm. or just overconsumption of things will make us feel like we are full. When I say full, just like, you know, whole, whole, right? We're chasing the feeling of of wholeness and we overconsume when we do this. We have to take a step back. Whenever domestication is taking you away from your natural state, that's when it starts to become too much. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Again, when, when... like you said, I I grew up in that household that like you got to get up from the table when you were like plate was empty. Like when Agreed. it was almost like when my grandmother or mother was satisfied with how much I ate, exactly. then I could get up. Yeah, I got called wasteful so much from my mama because I didn't finish my food. I, that's like, so wasteful. So that's, wasteful. Because that's one of the first domestications you get hit with as a kid. You know what I mean? And I get parents because I'm a parent now. I get. You're trying to track and see if they ate enough, but you have to just believe the other person or other end when they say, I've had enough. Yeah. You know I mean, mean, nine times out of ten with kids, if they ain't had enough, they're going to be back. Oh, yeah, they for will. For something else. <laughs> <laughs> for something else. But just like humans, right? Just like adults, mm-hmm. right? When uh, we don't think we're full enough, we just keep eating until we're stuffed. Yeah. Until we can't take no more. It's crazy because I'm still guilty of that. Like, yeah. that was domesticated so deeply in me that literally the other day I ate so much of, and really it was out of pleasure too. The food be good. I mean, when I tell you the food hit, it hit. Yeah. But, but indulging in them pleasures will get you. Yeah, I would like so and I'm someone with a sensitive stomach. So when I'm full, it really it it fucks me up. So yeah, just getting a, getting away from being so domesticated, we have to get back um I guess in the animal sense to the wild. Yeah. The wild so version natural of you, the natural you. Yeah. And how you want to operate in this world. You know, so many times when we think about what we want to do, the answer of what we can do is a domesticated answer. Mm. You know what I mean? It's it's what pleases mom and dad, what pleases society, what pleases my friends, my my campus, my community. You know, when they look at me, is this something that I think they would be proud of? Right. That's too much domestication. You need to be wild about your passions. You need to be wild about what you dream about. Yeah. Like, let loose. Nobody else should be involved in what we're going to go through. Because when, when the judgment day comes or your last day comes, I don't think anybody else is going to be involved in that moment with you. Absolutely. And just be you. Do what you want. Don't do what you can. Like, I like that. Do what you want, not what you can. Like, we have to pursue our natural selves. Mm-hmm. Things that make us feel like us. Yeah. So, let's get rid of the domestication. Take the napkin out of the shirt and just eat. Oh, okay. This lady. So, with that lengthy but necessary intro, let's get into a few ways that we are becoming a master of ourselves. 
A big one for me is having that unconditional love for myself as well as others. But I feel like it starts with self. I think the way that you treat people, the way that you treat people that you love, the way that you treat strangers is a reflection of how you treat yourself. And that used to trip me out because, like, I used to lie to myself so bad to the point where I didn't believe that statement that I just said. I'm like, I love myself, but it's at the same time you're doing things that interferes with that belief that you love yourself. Mm-hmm. Unconditional love is needed when before you even start the journey. You're looking down that tunnel. It's dark. You don't know what's going to happen. You need to prep yourself, kind of hype yourself before you go down. Hey, whatever happens down there, I love myself. I trust myself. I'm brave enough, and I have enough control. I have enough understanding of self-healing to whatever happens when I get down there. Remember, you're okay. Yeah. That's like the first thing in this journey, and it's to not judge yourself either. Agreed. You're going to notice things about you. When you walk down the museum of you, the history of you, you know, back in the day, you used to have the um, the ghost of Christmas past, and they'll take the guy through his life and show him all the things that he did. You never watched that movie before? You're looking at Is me very confused. Is that a movie confused. or what? It's an old Christmas movie. Oh, no, i never it, seen that. Yeah, it's a ghost of Christmas past. They don't know what I mean. Anyways, there's a guy like on this deathbed, <laughs> right? And a, the ghost of Christmas comes back and shows him every Christmas how he was a Grinch and, you know, not nice and whatnot. And he comes back and he wants to be a good person and he goes out and does great things, right? When you walk mm-hmm. down the path of you, the museum of you, you're going to see some photos, you know, things on the walls that you like, why the fuck would I put a frame on that? Yeah. <laughs> why the fuck didn't we torch that when we had the chance to forget that? Right. You know, there are parts of you that are not so... Beautiful, right? But even those parts need to be addressed so they can be contained, managed. adjusted, and managed. Mm-hmm. You know, those parts. Really, those parts of you are the pieces that kind of hold you back from certain things. Everybody has different levels of these. It's almost the same villains in everybody's story. Self-doubt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Self-judgment. You know, too many opinions of the outside world. Yeah. You know, we all have these kind of same things, but they're, they're at different levels. And we all have to control them some way before we even get deep into this journey. Understand that this is a non-judgment zone. This is a self-care place. Whatever happens, the ugliest versions of you are accepted here. Yeah, I love that. And I've had to really lean into, you know unconditional love for self because I adopted some of the behaviors and tactics of society and parents like my mom right like I'm cheering myself on when I'm when I'm doing good but when I feel like I'm not doing so good or I'm failing at something I'm talking crazy to myself I'm judging myself even like today for example I said as as I said in the beginning like I'm tired my brain really ain't working that well, and there's almost like a little judgment. But mm-hmm. in these moments, I think these are the most important moments where you have to really accept yourself and give that extra love and care to yourself. Because when you're on your shit, when you're on top of your game, you don't really need as much love. No, no, <laughs> like you, this, these are the times that you need yeah, that yeah. unconditional love. You need that non-judgment. Absolutely. These are the times that matter the most. So I'm taking my own advice specifically today in this moment, giving myself the grace, the unconditional love that I needed. So as we take this walk, this journey into the mastery of self, we're walking down a museum of us, and we start to notice patterns, right? If you're in the art, any form of art, music, you know, paintings, whatever it might be, once you get to an artist and you really get to know them, you can start to see the patterns in their artwork. Yeah. You're the same way. Mm -hmm. You have a very distinct pattern in you if you watch for it, you notice for it. It comes with timing, almost automatic. Noticing things in your life and how they reoccur, why they keep coming up and how we let them overfill and boil over and and just make this big mess in our lives. Absolutely. Noticing everything that we bring to the table for us. The simple act of noticing And breaking the cycle of automatic is the most beautiful, groundbreaking, 
and freeing. <laughs> I was trying to like what and freeing thing that you can do for yourself. A hundred percent. Patterns are the bump in the road that you keep feeling. But a lot of times, if you rode that road for so long, the pothole, it just don't seem like a bounce like that to you no more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like... The rough road is kind of smooth, so you've been over it so many times in your life that you're not even noticing the patterns. Yes, that's facts. When you have done something for so long, when you first did it, it felt really bad. Mm -hmm. And you know how they say, time heals all wounds? No. That's... Huh? You think it's true? In this sense, I'm not not literal in a literal sense, but I'm just mm -hmm. giving it as an example. Like with time, that thing that hurt you so bad can start to feel normal. Yeah. Because you're so yeah. you're used to it. You're numb. Conditioned. You're conditioned. You're mm -hmm. immune to that particular thing. Yeah, it's like one of the simple ways I know everybody with a smartphone in today's time can relate to is automatics. You ever opened your phone? I need to research this or look this up. I need to see what time they close. And you went to Instagram. Don't yeah. know how they thumb. You go to Instagram and you go right out of it yeah. so fast. Out of habit. It's automatic. Yeah. The body, the hand, it just automatically goes right there. Mm -hmm. That's what we mean by the automatics in life. Things that you just don't even think about. Absolutely. We have good automatics. We have bad ones. I was ones. just thinking that we have good ones and we have bad ones. What are some good patterns that... And themes that you notice in your life that you want to keep. Mm -hmm. for, for me, one of my automatics is I don't care how I feel. When I had COVID, <laughs> I got a bad hip. Not COVID. Yeah, it's when I had COVID <laughs> years ago. I say years ago. It was like two years it ago. It was two years ago. Bad hip right now. I didn't have, you know, it's like, I've been on crutches. You have when we uh, about six years ago, you broke your yeah, ankle yeah. playing I've, basketball. I've been on crutches. not broke it, but whatever. But I, I had I had a, a stress fracture in my leg. Okay, I'm gonna get up and clean my house. Yeah, it's automatic. I don't give a fuck what condition I am in. It's automatic every morning. Re ain't got to worry about it. I'm gonna clean the entire house before I get any work started. Absolutely, it's the automatic. Absolutely, it organizes my day. It clears my mind out. Every single day, it's a positive automatic that I have mm -hmm. that I go to every morning for a comfort. You know what I mean? It's a good automatic. I got bad automatics, too. Which when are? I roll out of bed, that phone, baby. 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 That phone. What, what hey. I got popping today? What, what's going on? <laughs> what are they doing on the What they doing on net? <laughs> I, just, I just woke up. What's, what's, what's going on? <laughs> I got bad automatics that yeah. I have to get away from. Yes. You know what I mean? We all got good automatics and bad automatics. When we lean into our good automatics and we try to stack things on top of it, then we can really see some positive change. Yeah, like a domino effect. That's literally called habit stacking. Yeah. Atomic um, habits, by the way, habit, guys. guys. That's, that's, a, that's another Also, one. by the way, we received this sweetest little voice memo. Oh, my God. If you oh, haven't yeah, left us a voice memo, leave us one because I about cried. Yeah, we love them. Yes, but um, they were asking us about a book list. And we'll give a book list at the end. Well, of this episode? Yeah, we can do it this episode or whatever. I know. Well, I was going to say that I have a sub stack that, oh. and it's always linked in the show notes. And soon I'm going to be putting recommended books, book lists, and it's going to be a recurring thing, even when it comes to fiction and nonfiction. Like, I'm going to have that updated every month, but also in upcoming episodes, we're, we're going to talk about books. Yes. But, um, yeah. But like I said, stacking good habits on top of good habits. Good automatics on top of good automatics. Mm -hmm. I clean up every morning. Um, a lot of times I like to throw something on positive. I like to listen to like the Quran or other times it's music or it might be an audible, a podcast. Something that when I listen to it, it'll get my frequencies flowing in a good direction yes it ain't gonna solve the day but it'll always get me going in the right direction yeah I, when you said throw something on i thought you was talking about like an outfit i'm gonna throw something on like that TikTok. I, uh, yeah i'm gonna put a little something on. i'm gonna put a little something on i am gonna put a little something on afterwards though. absolutely but yes good automatics stack them on top of each other if it's possible bad automatics let's try to prevent them one thing i need to start doing that my wife does she leaves her phone in another room mm-hmm 
So when she wakes up, it's not even in arm's reach. My black out of, ass. Out of, out of sight, out, out of mind. mind. Is yeah. that is it? Is my, that it? My black ass, that's under the pillow. <laughs> my black ass. What? You don't sleep with it under the pillow. No, babe. Like a gun. My joint protects me from under the pillow. A lot of times I do, and that's the reason why. I didn't know that. Because it'll start off something. Okay, I'm like, oh, let me check the weather before I get out of bed. Yeah, man, that gram though. <laughs> what the gram do? Yeah, what that gram do? Shoot, let me check that weather. Let me get that gram. It's, I got to stop it. Like, I got to stop it. It's You're one insane. Thing I, I am. I'm if bad. you, I'm sorry, guys. If you sleep with your phone under your pillow, you're, you're, you're insane. I do it too often. <laughs> I try not to, but you got the good night stand on your side. That's why. I, but, but my phone don't be on the night stand. You, yeah. you, the math ain't mathing right now. You making up excuses. Yeah. But see, if I had your night stand, I just put it in the drawer. You know how easy it is to get it out of the drawer? No, if I can't see it, it's out of sight, out of mind. Not true. It needs to be in another room. But for me personally, because my husband didn't ask me what my good automatics were, what my bad automatics were. You ain't got none. (laughs) (laughs) But for me personally, my good automatics is, like you just said, nine times out of ten. Nine times out of ten, I do mess up sometimes because players fuck up too. But nine times out of ten, I do not get on my phone when I wake up. Like, I... I can't. Yeah, I'll give you that. You are solid. Yes. And even when it comes to, I won't even talk to anybody on a phone outside of my household out before or after a certain time of the day. Mm-hmm. Like, I just won't. Especially my mom. Like, because I already know she's going to be with the shits when she called me. <laughs> um, So that's one of my goods. Another thing about me, I'm going to drink some water when I wake up. Yeah, you got me. I'm going to hydrate when I drink, when I wake up. I ain't had a lick yet. You ain't had no water all day. I had a smoothie. I'm not even judging you because I am in yeah, a space. That, that, that was already I am in a space where I am not judging myself or others. Another thing about me that's good, I'm naming all the goods. I'm going to do my skincare. I'm going to yeah. cleanse my face and moisturize. Gonna take care of yourself. Absolutely. Moving into the bads <laughs> that I want to, I know. Bads. <laughs> the bads. I often allow my emotions to guide me. Like I allow my emotions to make decisions, make the thin, make decisions. <laughs> One. Make oh god no, because I would be, I would lose today. Let's not let's not do a count. Mm-hmm. But I allow my 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 emotions to guide me and make impulsive decisions, like yeah. going to Starbucks or literally some days I'll be like I fucking quit. I'm not doing a YouTube another YouTube mm-hmm. video again. Like I quit. That's a definitely a recurring pattern, a recurring theme of my life that I've noticed that I'm working on, and I tell myself in that moment like. Bitch, you're gonna be feeling a completely different way tomorrow. It, yeah. Literally or, in the next couple the minutes. Hour. Yeah. yeah. The hour. One of them things, like you said, if your emotions drive you, that's one thing you gotta notice about your artwork is that you need to put a cap on your emotions. You yeah. need to on the days where uh I'm just I'm so down. I my feeling you wanna just climb into the rabbit hole of of like self pity almost. Mm-hmm. I just wanna climb into I don't wanna do anything today, I just wanna eat, stay home in my sheets. Those are the days you need to try to find a way to put a cap on that emotion. It's one of those things I see, I don't know who said it or whatnot, but consistency is like showing up the days you don't want to show up. Discipline, yeah. If you can find a way to do that on the days you're uninspired, still put the same work in on the, as the days you are inspired. That's that's Those are days that matter the most. Yes, if you can get through the dog days of it all, then you will get to see you know beautiful results. Absolutely. Although we're talking about habits that you possess, that you carry, good or bad, because of these certain habits, you're going to see themes in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, why can't I get past this certain task? Why do I keep starting, you know, a million different businesses? Why does this keep happening in my life? Why does this thing keep recurring in my life? Why do I keep attracting people who are toxic? I don't know, just throwing things out there. But sometimes you will start to see patterns and themes in your life that may look like they have nothing to do with you but they're actually a result of your recurring habits recurring thinking recurring thinking because at the end of the day everything is energy Mm -hmm. if your energy is is vibrating at a circuit certain frequency you're going to attract those things into your life yes so notice the things notice 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 baby notice notice Put you on the simple like, act of notice. A real, a real easy challenge is like a thirty day notice. Just for thirty days, just notice what happened. Yeah, you know what I mean, notice. Did you follow through on your plans? Why not? And when you didn't follow through, what did you turn to? 
Exactly. What is the thing you went to? You know what I mean? What it, Where was your place to go to when you knew you should be doing something else? What was it? You popped that Netflix on? Was it you went to the game? Like, what did, what did you do? What, what we couldn't get done, what we needed to get done to become what we see ourselves as. Yeah, and on the act of simple act of noticing, another thing that's really beautiful outside of noticing your habits is just noticing things in the world. Like, notice the leaves fall. That's, that's very a, that's therapeutic. Very therapeutic, yeah, yeah. Notice the little girl laughing. Notice, just, just notice. Yeah, yeah. Notice the environment around you, the mm-hmm. environment you put yourself through. I asked uh I asked my brother one time, cause um this was a couple of years ago. We hood we hood babies. We love to be in the hood. I just love to be in the hood all yeah, the time. Yeah, we were just having a conversation about how me and you was just about ten years ago. We yeah, was like ten. nineteen, yeah, yeah. posted up in the hood like that was our day. All day. Like booed up in the hood on the block, up, right on right on my little crown. Beat. Yes, right right there at the corner store. Really like right out there. That it was our our thing to be out. Yeah. And, um, to really be outside. Yeah, really. Back <laughs> when outside was a real thing. Yeah. No, no phones. No, no camera pictures. None of that shit. We yeah. just outside. Well, no cameras on the block. Um, my brother used to still go back, and he used to, every time he used to go back. Um, I say go back, but I just mean like just to the frequent areas. Well, I was still living in the hood this time, but like he used to go to certain areas, and every time he would leave, he'd call me. Me in a bad mood, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Rapping with such and such over there. They, they, woo, 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 woo. And I just had to ask him, like, bro, why you keep putting yourself in that environment? Because yeah. you pull up on them. Right. So you have to notice, like, the environments you pulling up on mm. and how you are when you leave. Yes. What, your pull-up game, like, with people you around, how do they make you feel when you leave the environment? If you always go over there, and every time you leave them over there, you need to have a long ride home so you can think about <laughs> things and shit like yeah. that. Look at that. Versus when you're around other people... Or, you know, other environments, how good you feel afterwards. Yeah. That's a good one, bro. Yeah. Just notice everything around you, the environment. Yes. This episode is sponsored by Daily Harvest. Not going to lie. We're going home for the holidays, and I'm going to definitely indulge a little bit. Indulge is a safe word. I'm going <laughs> to I'm. It's going down. It's going down. But with that indulging, I find myself, my body really just craving nourishing meals, nourishing food to kind of balance everything out. Yeah. Luckily, I have Daily Harvest nourishing and healthy and delicious meals delivered right to my doorstep without having to really do anything at all, too much work at all. Yeah, you be loving the smoothie bowls and everything like that from them. Yes. Me, I can't lie, I'm eyeing a tomato, basil, Balinese, you know what I mean? I think that's next on my list. Yeah, that actually sounds amazing. Yeah, like you mentioned, I love the smoothies and the harvest bowls as well. But one thing I love the most, like outside of the food itself, is not having to think too much about what to cook or what to eat. And I really can just skip the shopping, chopping, and post cooking cleanup. It's amazing. It's just too convenient to not Agreed. go to. It's, it's, it's too easy of a shot. You can't miss. Exactly. Another one of my faves about Daily Harvest is that they believe in the power of sustainability by using recyclable or compostable packaging when possible daily harvest is doing their part to take care of our earth helps me limit my waste and be the sustainable queen that i am and feel good about what i'm doing what i'm consuming and what i'm contributing to our planet yeah we're gonna eat good we're gonna do good for the earth it's just good all the way around around Absolutely. here get the best of both worlds with daily harvest Go to dailyharvest.com slash F-T-H-H to get $65 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash F-T-H-H and receive $65 off your first box. This episode is sponsored by Quince. So with this time of the year, you know, we're in the middle of the weather change. We're going Mm -hmm. from fall to winter. We digging into the back of the closet to get to those pieces to bring them to the front. And we not quite feeling what we had last year like that, are we? And it's like, now we feel like we got to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff, but that's not necessary. Mm -mm. We're shopping at Quince where we can get timeless, minimal, classic pieces that are going to serve us next year. They're going to be here. 2026, 2029. Exactly. I'm, to, and I'm still going to be fine during these times. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Quince has high quality products. They work with factories and cut out the middleman. Mm-hmm. They saving, so they bless us with the savings as well. Absolutely. What are you looking forward to? What 
piece are you looking forward to getting? They got year? leather jackets on there. Yeah. And I heard leather jackets make you look younger. Because you have. I don't know if it's true or not, <laughs> but I'm going to get one from Quince. Yeah. I'm looking forward to nice sweaters and really, I, I really want another trench. It's been a while since yeah. I had me like a really yeah. nice trench. So that's what I got. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I got my eye on. Something else that I love about Quince outside of the amazing quality, the classic and timeless feels and looks with all of their pieces is that they only work with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. We love that. Do- doing good, looking good. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it's a good life. Exactly. With Quince, we can get right for a long time. Not a little time. Not a not a we get it now and then next year. No. We're gonna be right for a very long time shopping with Quince. Exactly. And it makes putting an outfit together so easy, like putting an outfit together shouldn't be hard. Mm-mm. And with Quince, they make it easy. We love that. Take the drum out of planning an outfit and upgrade your closet with Quince today. Go to quince.com slash FTHH for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash F-T-H-H and get free shipping and 365 day returns. Don't miss out. It's so important that we... Break the cycle of automatic. You mentioned this early because the things that we're doing right now, right? The routine that you did right this morning, you got up, whatever you did when you got up, it's automatic. You didn't really have to think that much about it. Mm-hmm. And I think in a sense, that can be good. Mm-hmm. That can be good if you're if the if the automatic behaviors are things that nourish your soul, things that that fuel you. you. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. That can be good, but it becomes bad when you start doing these automatic habits that mean you no good. Yeah. And just like just like automatic sounds, you don't even notice it. Mm-hmm. I've heard you say this before. I've heard it a lot of times, but you say it a lot too. Whether we're going, nothing is ever stagnant. Although yeah. sometimes things feel stagnant, we're either going up, up or, down. or down. Yeah. And so you don't want to get into an automatic cycle where you're slowly but surely going down. You want to get better. You want to get 1% better every day, little by little. Yes, yeah, little by little. It just It's like a wave. Yeah, and nothing it's a wave. Is, nothing is consistent, you know what I mean, in a flat line. Everything is either up or down. Yeah. No matter what. No matter how positive something is. We, we positive right now on our podcast working, but like. Other things are are just slowly going down. You don't even notice it. Mm-hmm. I'm not working out, so my my fitness is slowly just taking a small dip. You know what I mean? It's all a wave, though. Yeah, for sure. It's a balance. It's a balance. With noticing so many things, you can then start to measure up who you actually are in certain environments or with these certain mm-hmm. emotions. Yeah. And that go back to lifting the mask. Yes. Right? When I spoke about... Watch your pull-up game. When you pull up on people, before you go in, are you noticing a shift? My baby would always say, you're noticing a shift in your breath. Mm. Are you breathing differently? Are you noticing that now your thoughts are going a certain way because you're going into an environment where you're putting this kind of mask on? Yeah. And you have to breathe this way in this mask for it to be comfortable. You have to think this way in that comfortable mask. Yeah. You know what I mean? Lifting the mask and really getting back to who you are is so important. Our masks, so many of them out there that we use, um, some are positive, some are negative. When when I rap, per se, I put a mask on. It's like, that's yeah. when Sunset Tim comes in. Yes, play. yes, your alter ego. He is a, he is a ultra confident, no sweat, smooth kind of fella, articulate fella. Real articulate fella. No fucks given in the best way possible. In the best way possible. The man, he's him. He's like the man. He yeah. really is. I don't always wake up on Sunset Tim. Yeah. But again, with good automatic habits, I'm still going to get through this because I control my emotions. My emotions don't control me. Facts. I'm still going to get to Sunset Tim, no yeah. matter what that looks like today. Remember, mm-hmm. like meeting ourselves where we are. Mm-hmm. So no matter what. Some masks are good. Other masks are simple, just survival masks. Yeah. We hate being, we hate where we work or whatever. We hate some of the people we work with, but we wear that mask and we're cordial because we got bills. Exactly. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that mask right there is one that is strictly for survival. 
mm-hmm. it's not to be judged for positive or negative because it's survival. We have I'm to I'm here because I need to. Here because I, I need cause to. Because I, I feel like I need to in this moment today. And then there are the negative masks that don't showcase anything of us. And the first one to come to mind when I think of a negative mask is like highlight culture on Instagram. Mm-hmm. It's just a mask of everything is awesome. Everything, everything is awesome. Everything, How song goes? Everything, everything is, is awesome. awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. team. <laughs> yeah, that's from Lego movie. But highlight culture is a mask. You're only showcasing the most beautiful parts of your life. What you find the most lit part of your life. Yeah. Right? We're only showing that. And that mask can block how real shit is in you for you and in your life. Mm-hmm. And what's really going on with you. And you can't really be seen any other way outside of that. And it's, it's just a bad mask to throw on because it ultimately blocks and blurs your... Authentic self. Your authentic self. You can't show up like your normal self. Now, You since you are a, online, you are a perfect dressing person... You can't dare be seen in joggers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Out. Because remember online, we were a perfect being, and they have to get that same image when we're out, or Mm -hmm. then they see the real me. Mm -hmm. And I think, too, when it comes to the mask that we put on, the reason we do this is because we want to be perceived a certain way. Mm -hmm. We want to control the narrative. We want to control people's opinions and people's thoughts about us, the way that people perceive us. But the thing is, you're never going to be able to control how someone sees you. How you see you and how someone else sees you, completely different. Like how I see me and how Travis sees me, completely different. And that's not always bad, but I think you should stop yourself while you're ahead. If your Mm -hmm. reason for wearing these multiple masks is to get people to view you in a certain light, Give it up. Give, Give it, it up, up honey. Yeah, before you get deeper into it. Exactly. But another thing, though, is that, well, I guess mask wouldn't be the right word for this. Because in referring back to the book, he refers to mask as, well, as you said, the positive mask, being a rapper, yeah, yeah, being a dad, mask. being a mom, being a creative. We are multiple things. Yeah. We are multidimensional beings. So I think it's important sometimes to embrace all these versions of you and use all these, I guess, use the masks for good. Yeah, yeah. Like A lot of times we think of our favorite superheroes, the Batmans, the Supermans. They have costumes. They have identities that mm-hmm. like don't match who they really are in real life because they're hiding or whatever it might be. Every superhero has a mask they put on before they go save the goddamn world. Just like with a mom and a dad, but also... When you put that mask on, make sure to let you show through it. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm a dad, but I dad my way. Exactly. I don't, I don't dad the way other it's people. It's unique to you. It is. I understand things at a level that I don't think other dads do, or, or other dads might understand something at a level I don't. You understand your children, though. That's yes. the thing. I understand who I need to be as their father exactly, to Exactly, as their caregiver. So, yes, yeah, so our mask... Uh, they, like I said, some are good, some are bad, some are survival. But make sure we are showing through these masks. And, and it's important. Don't forget who you are. Mm-hmm. Like within these roles and, you know, all the roles that we play, don't forget, you know, who you are. Yeah, absolutely. We can get caught up. And I can get caught up in being Sunset Tim. And Sunset Tim, I ain't never saw that nigga take out trash. I never saw he the never rapper version of me. When I think of the rap version of me, I've never saw that nigga outside of taking trash out. Really? I've never saw Sunset Tim take trash out. That's Only interesting. Dad yeah. That's dad mask when I take trash out. Yeah, and dad, you like, y'all, I've taken a trash out before and he be pissed. Like, why I would you do pissed. that? Like, why would you Why would you put yourself around such an environment? Why would you do that? Why would you put your, why, why would you, you say? Why would you walk to a fucking disgusting trash can? But that's on you. Seeing me a certain way, then I that I see myself, then I perceive myself. Like I'm gonna take the trash out if I have it. Like if you're not here and the trash is overflowing, I'm gonna take the trash out. You probably took the trash out four times. Me? Yeah. Probably. I can count on my fingers the times I took the trash out. I can count on my pre- fingers how many times I cook. Facts. I'm not. I'm not big on cooking. Yeah. But in in like to just go back on mask one more time. I want to say. It is important to like embody those that those roles. Like when I'm cooking, I'm a chef. 
Period. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm a top tier chef. Yeah. I yeah. think you get and, and when I'm creating, I it's important to embody like your creative identity, the yeah. creative that is you, because I feel like you get the best results when you use those masks for good. Yeah. I feel like what we're saying is controversial. I've never heard anybody like say like use masks for good. We, when we think of masks, is we think of like negative things. But yeah, no, a mask can be a very good thing. Yeah, I'm gonna say what I feel, even if it is at odds with the rest of society. I, I can understand why Spider Man would wear a mask. By yeah. the way, Spider Man is on Netflix now. Oh God! <laughs> into the universe, but is it into the universe? Or I don't know through? if it's through the Spider Verse or. I think it's through the Spider Verse. You love the one with Miles in it. Miles, yes. Miles Morales. Miles Morales. That's my but favorite one. I understand why Spider Man wears a mask. If you knew what he looked like, people would never leave him alone. Agreed. Hey, man, you know, you, shit, people come to him for emergencies that ain't emergencies. Like, yeah. I got a leak in my roof. Could you put a little web on that motherfucker real quick? <laughs> you know what I mean? To get, me, get me back right. You know what I mean? Well, I got a hole in my tire. You mind if you uh, shoot a web while I air it up real quick? You're hilarious. This man trying to save New York City, and you want me to fix this bum-ass tire, bro. That is why some people need masks, bro. Agreed. Everybody don't need... You say everybody don't need access to you. Agree. Everybody don't. That's what the mask is for sometimes. Not everybody need access mm, to you. And yes. Certain masks pull out certain abilities in you. I wear a certain mask when I need to say no. Yeah. It ain't the same mask as my yes. You know what I mean? But when I, because for going back to like walking down the Museum of Me, on my pictures, you will see a consistent theme. I've, I've always had a trouble telling people no. Agree, you have. I, I've, through my life, I've had a trouble telling people no. I've had trouble putting myself first, you know, going out, going hard for me. I've, and I've respecting your own boundaries. Yes, I've had I've had trouble with that. My, my heart would show that clearly. Mm -hmm. But, Again, I've developed a nice mask over the years that I throw on when I need to tell somebody, no, 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 <laughs> no sir, no. <laughs> the voice changed too? The voice changed, no, <laughs> no, no, sir, no, <laughs> not at all, no. Well, one of the themes of your artwork, mm -hmm. um, one of both of ours, really, we have a problem with wanting to start so many projects at once. Agreed. Procrastination, basically. Yeah. In, in so many words. But it don't look like procrastination. It don't look like procrastination. It look like I'm on my grind. Because, yeah, I'm on my grind. I got this I'm starting this. I'm starting that. And I got this going too. I'm going to keep that going. Procrastination has been on my my artwork yeah. for a while. But I learned to prioritize. And you mm -hmm. can't do all these things at once, but you will do all these things at some point. Oh, I like that. You like that? I do. I like that. Yeah. Walking through our artwork, noticing who we are. Picking the correct mask, destroying certain masks, adjusting certain masks. Throughout this process, it's very important to know not to compare you to any thing, person, place that you see in the world. Agreed. Comparison will kill the entire process. You'll want to go back to step one. Mm -hmm. You've made it so far through this tunnel, and now you want to go back. Because the guy on the tunnel next to you has a fucking yacht. <laughs> and you don't know how he got it, but we're going to start over and do what he did. We're going to do exactly what he did. And I don't know why they reminded me of whenever we were younger, we had a child at a really young age, y'all, which if you're not new here, you know that. Mm -hmm. I remember my cousin, and I, and I think I know her intentions were really, really good, offered us to move in with them, me, you, and our baby, and um, D.C., or is it? It's not DC, is it? It's Maryland. A, yeah, yeah, Bowie. Bowie. Maryland, and certain people when they try to help you, they want you to do things exactly how they did it. Yes. Right, and I just want to give us our what is it called? Flowers. Give us our flowers. Thank you. Give us our flowers, <laughs> because at that age we were just like, you know, nah, I appreciate this help, or you wanting to help. But this is not my path. Yeah. You know, I know I've had a child at a young age. I've done things that, you know, really people who perceived me didn't think I was going to have a child at a young age. Mm -hmm. But this isn't my path. And I and I feel that if I follow my path and stay true to me, I'm mm -hmm. going to be exactly where I need to be. Yeah, I don't know when, but I will. I don't know when, don't know where. But I know it's going to pan out how it needs to pan out. Yeah, and then so many people will 
again, they compare themselves to you when they feel like, oh, you are just like me. Like your cousin you're speaking about, she looks at you like she's she just think as we smart the same. as me. Yeah. Like she can get it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see what you're point, saying. She's saying she's just as smart as me. She works just as hard as me. She's mm-hmm. on the right path. Let me get her under my wing and doing things this way and she'll have the life I have. Right. And they coming from a positive standpoint. It is. But it's, good intentions. They have good intentions. I'll say good intentions. But it's never correct to think that if someone follows right behind in your footsteps, Barbatum, they are going to land where you landed and love it like you love it. Exactly. It's just dangerous to think that people should follow you. But yeah, they have good intentions. But at the same time, you say it can't. It, it will never result in the same thing. Like you could have yeah. went down that path and I tried. Probably, you tried and 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 I had like I took Misery one class set in real fast. I took one class, an IT class, and I was like, yeah, no. Could you can y'all picture the spiritual lady that is next to us, just strictly can. Can I guess compressed to IT like yeah, you know and I mean, mean? And it's only compressed because that's, that's not, not my calling. Yeah, it's not, it's not your yeah, calling. and I and like spiritual, but also just connection, yeah, community, yeah. community, and purpose. Purp, yeah, and just because yeah. for someone else, like I said, IT is the way to go for yeah, you. Yeah, and 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 people are killing it in, in IT and software engineer. If that's your path, you know, take it. Yeah, whatever, I, yeah. whatever. Path it's, it it is. seems really cool too. I always see these videos online. We watch a guy who does software engineering. Yes, I'm just like, I don't name. know what he does, but he's doing it well. And he looks very smart. <laughs> and he looks smart while doing he it. He does. But I couldn't dare walk in that field. I'd probably uh, cry. I would, I would cry every day after I, work. I couldn't do it. It's too many numbers. It's too many. I don't know. It's just too much for me. Yeah, agree. It's, not, it's not for my path. And also, in a sense, when we talk about comparing, I want to touch on the fact that even if you are doing something or if you desire to do something that somebody else is doing, like a podcast or a fitness journey, you may look at people who have gotten to a certain place in their journey and you compare yourself to those people. And that's just not good. Mm-mm. You can't you don't know what these these people did to get here. Are you seeing is the aftermath? Are you are seeing is the results? Yeah. Right. But I think it's important to shift that focus on you it's okay to look up to people but never compare yourself to nobody else we all have these unique things about us that make us who we are that we need to lend and offer to the world to make up the dream of the planet yes you tie that back in there really nice. the dream of the planet <laughs> but yes comparison kills all things we absolutely stay away from it with all all aspects of life don't compare yourself. Absolutely. Because then when you do compare yourself, like just bringing it all back full circle, when you do compare yourself, you start to lose who you truly are because you start to do things. Like you said before, and they end up about that yacht. Now you're yeah, doing yeah. things that this man did to get his yacht. That ain't even you. What yeah, are you doing? No path. That's not even who you are. And then on the other side of comparison, a lot of times when we compare ourselves, we often, we speak about it. We often think about, you know, we talk bad about ourselves. Like, oh man, they got so much more than me. Yeah. You know? There's also the other side, like, oh, I got so much more than them. Mm. I'm shitting on them over People there. People don't talk about People that part, about of that part of comparison. Oh, I'm shitting on them. I'm doing way better than you. I got more money than you. And it and it be unconsciously sometimes, too. Bruh, a lot of times. A lot of I'm times, guilty of it. People would do that. That's the other side of comparison. Cause that's how yeah. it makes us feel big. Yep. Ego. Feeding e- that ego. It feeds the ego. But that takes away from our human side. Yeah. You don't need to compare yourself. You don't need to treat them people like that because you feel like you all the way up here. Yeah. You know what I mean? We see that all the time with the super celebrities and what time, what not, the mm-hmm. toxic egos that come out of them sometimes. Yes. You know, some days they be, man, I do this for the people. I love you. I love the people, man. I love the fans. I love <laughs> other days, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying, balling out, they... Throwing, throwing money, money, burning it. Like, hey, you've seen people do ridiculous things when they compare themselves and they win in the comparison. And their ego is driving them. Absolutely. So stay away from ego. I mean, stay away from comparison on both sides. Absolutely. Good and bad. Absolutely. To finish this conversation off, it's important that we understand that practice makes the master. Smooth. Practice makes the master. Yeah, none of this will be done in a day. None of this will be done in a week, a month. It's a lifelong journey. A, an entire journey. Take your time and come as you are. Please do that. I think so many times when we want to make things better, we're looking for a rush. A lot of the leading medicine we have in society is simply 
to ease away the pain immediately. A band aid. A, a band aid for, for for some type of purpose, like cold medicines. When you go to the doctor, you don't go to the doctor to necessarily get something to heal, right? We have a cold. We go to the doctor to get something to ease away the pain we're going through as we go through the cold. The body naturally usually yeah. gets rid of it itself. Absolutely. When the body runs a fever, that is actually the body's natural way of defeating things. Okay, Dr. Tim. And what we what do we do? What we, we go do? get fever reducer. We get fever <laughs> we get redu- reducer. That's that that's on Western medicine, bro. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> we go get fever reducer. Because we want to get this shit over with fast and we don't want any pain in between time. Yeah. Take the time. I know the fever sucks, but it's naturally how you are supposed to get rid of things. Mm -hmm. Practice makes the master. Take your time. Do not go buy that medicine to speed the process up. It may be uncomfortable, but you will be healed. Or you can use natural herbs. Use medicine that is made from herbs. Feeling better. Meditating. Breathing. These are natural herbs of self mastery. When it feels like it's too much for you right now, mm-hmm. like, I'm just I'm so mad at myself. I'm so mad. I'm so heated that I I I noticed that I do this shit and I did it again, dog. I knew I do it. Calm down. We're gonna take a moment and I gather breathe. ourselves. We're gonna breathe. This is natural remedy. These are natural herbs. Mm. If if the air if the air might be need to be considered a herb, yeah. Because once you Take control of your breathing. It feels like something is healing you. Mm -hmm. Take a good deep breath. You'll be all right, kid. I think you've won every battle in life. You're still alive. You'll survive. And something you need to think about is the fact that you've spent all these years becoming. We're always becoming, right? Yeah. And sometimes we're becoming someone who is closer to the person that we're meant to be. And then other times we're becoming someone who is even further than the person that we're meant to be, right? And I think a lot of us, when we think about domestication, we spend a lot of time becoming the person that mom and dad wanted us to be, becoming the person that society wanted us to be. That took time. Mm -hmm. So in order to reverse that, unlearn, and become a master of you, it's going to take time. It's going to take practice. We're always changing. Mm -hmm. Who I am just naturally is always changing, especially if you think about the fact that we're unlearning. So we're always uncovering certain layers of ourselves. But if you do take the time, like we said before, to simply notice and get to know who you are, you'll be able to keep up in a sense. Like, in a sense, just keep up with the change that is you, the, mm-hmm. the change that is always happening within you. Yeah, facts. You don't have to be one thing. You can develop into something else. Agreed. At all times. Agreed. So practice makes the master. Practice makes the master. With that being said, we really appreciate you for being here with us today and allowing us in your space. We're sending you so much peace, so much love, and everything you need in this moment. Talk to you next time. Bye. Peace.